Hey everyone, Chat Cemetery is back. Drew Koenig returns for the second episode in a row here to now discuss Graveyard Shift. It is not a short story collection, imagine that, but it is from a sh- short story collection. So <laughs> there is that, Drew. You're you're keeping on brand here. <laughs> That's true. And oh, what a good decision this was. <laughs> You know, when I was done watching this, I had this thought. I was like, you know, I am prepared to watch so many bad movies for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that more more often than not seems to be the case. Yeah. So Graveyard Shift is the 1990 film that is adapted from the short story that appears in Night Shift, if I am not mistaken, and it is directed by Ralph S. Singleton. And, you know, given the number of familiar faces in this, I recognize David Andrews and Stephen Mocked or Stephen Mocked. I'm not really sure. Never know how that goes, but I think it's Stephen Mocked. And a couple other people have just played so many character roles. I was like, oh, you know, even though this movie is like 29 years old, that face kind of looks familiar to me. And then I'd go check IMDb and figure out what they were in. You know, mm-hmm. Brad Dorif was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I either have seen or I've seen enough pieces of to know who was in that. So yeah, I just was like, okay, well, maybe there's some hope for this movie. <laughs> there isn't really that much hope for this movie outside of no. the casting. <laughs> no, there's, there's really not. Uh, I spent an hour and a half of this movie going, why do you exist? And I don't, I don't feel like I ever got a satisfactory ending, a uh, satisfactory answer to that question. And I don't think it really has anything to do with who they cast in the movie. I think a lot of it has to do with the story. Because the thing is, this is one of Stephen King's shorter short stories, believe it or not. It's about 15 pages. And to turn 15 pages into a movie that was almost an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. It was about an hour and a half actually, but still I was kind of like, how are they going to get an hour and a half out of this? And the only thing I really remembered about this was that it was the rat story that I didn't particularly (laughs) care for. And I was just like, okay, here we go. I don't really want to watch this, but I am going to. (laughs) And I think I gave the movie credit for the casting for the most part (laughs) and you know some of the performances because they weren't unwatchable but it was just one of those things where i was like this was not a story that needed to be adapted as a feature film this is something that should have maybe been a short film like the lawnmower man which was done correctly by students at nyu not (laughs) the feature (laughs) film adaptations that have nothing to do with the story (laughs) yeah Graveyard Shift isn't very good at all, but I appreciate somebody like Brad Dourif just walking into a scene and then <laughs> stealing it, absolutely committing to it, like going 150 percent, like way harder than this movie needed to go. And just doing like this really long, this like long, intense spiel on like Vietnam. And it's like, what is going on? What is even happening right now? <laughs> I'm weirdly into this, but like, this is weird. Yeah, it was one of those things where you felt like there were maybe 20 or 30 good minutes out of it. And then the rest, you're like, huh, that's a choice. And, (laughs) you know, how many times do we have to see these guys heckling the new guy in town, John Hall? Because you're kind of like, all right, cool. We went to the local diner like five times (laughs) or whatever it was. (laughs) And you're just like, it's the same thing over and over and over again and you know warwick is by far i would say the worst character just personality wise he's super misogynistic as is the rest of this movie pretty much i would say with the exception of john hall everyone in this is pretty misogynistic and you have you know one woman working in the actual mill and she's kind of looked down upon like oh, you can just go home because this is sort of work for the men. And she well, insists on staying. And obviously that does not end up working out so well for her with the basement cleanup crew. <laughs> yeah. Well, two women and they both end up dying. 
Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot I, about I guess, the other I guess, one. I, I guess <laughs> technically there's three women in this movie and two of them die. Yeah. And the other two don't actually work in the mill. You know, there's yeah. the two office ladies. Yeah. <laughs> so Let's... not not a great look. Yeah, not not great. It's it's a very 1990 look. Um, and you could tell, too, that it was just of this time where the movie wasn't going to age well. And I don't know if that necessarily has to do with how Stephen King wrote the story or just the fact that they turned such a short story into a feature-length film and kind of had it drag on. At first, I was like, oh, it's only an hour and a half. This is great. And then I was like, oh, this is not great at all. Yeah, I would say I would say it has to do more with this movie in particular because in the short story, there weren't any women at all, which, I mean, isn't better. But there wasn't any kind of a statement on – um, misogyny in the workplace like there is in this, you know? Especially the sort of domestic abuse factor that was brought into this with Warwick and yeah. the secretary, I believe it was. And you sort of just have the entire town almost staring at him while he's throwing this woman on the ground. And you're like, really? No one, no one's <laughs> going to step in? No one yeah. is going to do anything? You were all just going to watch and in that moment you can tell that warwick thrives on power and it seems like the mill employs more people than probably anywhere else in the town one thing i did like though was that the movie gave a nod to richard bachman and it was the bachman mill yeah so they did get a little meta with it in a way that stephen king does with his own stories. so i could appreciate that but otherwise i was just kind of like oh okay this is a movie that i watched you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I don't think I really liked the characterization or the adaptation of Warwick in this because in the short story I had this notion and maybe this is on me that Warwick was like this basically a schmuck, you know? Like mm-hmm. he was this in- borderline incompetent hapless uh corporate stooge, you know? And they totally turned that on its head in this. Yeah, where like he's this hyper, he's like this hyper masculine alpha guy who's like a sexual harasser and <laughs> will just beat a woman in the street in front of God and everyone. Um, <laughs> All of the things that don't age well in movies. <laughs> yeah, and that just seems that seems out of touch with the Warwick that was in the short story. Right. So they did a disservice to that character by making him sort of the most evil person in the story. Yeah. And at the end, when he just starts, you know, stabbing and trying to kill them for helping him, you're like, dude, what's wrong with you? They are trying to get you out of there with them. And he's all of a sudden in like survival of the fittest mode. And he like goes totally bonkers. (laughs) And it's just one of those things where you're like, well, that took a turn that I did not want it to take (laughs) yeah well like the the scene in this where they're like uh come on mr boss man let's go down there like in the short story that's uh his way of like i'm going to basically have you murdered at this point yeah because i know what's up and like this is this is my turning point like this is how i'm going to get back at you and in this it's just like a step in the journey (laughs) Yeah. Like a very inconsequential step in the journey. At first I was like, okay, where are they going with this? And then they finally get into the more action-like scenes, I guess you could say, just because you're getting deeper and deeper into this basement. And you're kind of waiting and waiting. And then you're like, okay, that's a choice. That's a choice. And then you (laughs) finally get to the climax of the movie and you're like, that was also a choice. <laughs> so you have a bunch of choices that were made that just didn't fall in line with what I think I was expecting out of this movie. And, you know, I still want to give credit where credit is due because I felt like the cast really just worked with what they had. And, you know, everyone sort of went all in on what their character was supposed to be like. So that I can appreciate. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, I don't particularly like 
most of the characters. You kind of like Carmichael because you're like, this dude doesn't know what he's getting into. <laughs> and then he's gone and you're like, okay, well, that kind of sucks because we kind of liked him. And he kind of was just doing his own thing. And then you have John who ends up being the only one really getting out of there. And you're like, yeah, okay, this is the guy we like. This is what we were hoping for. But we were still hoping for, you know, a happier ending. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, I kind of like Jane, but no, yeah. Jane has Jane has to die being killed by her sexual harasser and uh, and assaulter, right? <laughs> Which, again, not a great look. Not at all. <laughs> One of the other things I do want to give this movie credit for was just the visual look and feel of it, because you definitely get that dingy basement vibe, and then when you see the monster you could tell that the practical effects paid off for that because you're like, this looks disgusting. I don't want anything yeah. to do with that tail there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks disgusting, but it also, you can tell that it doesn't look good. You know? Right, yeah. Because there are, there are all these like quick cuts of it and they'll only last like half a second to a second and then they'll jump back to John. I think that works for this kind of movie though. Yeah. As bad as it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you definitely know that, like, if they spent any time longer on that, the entire movie would fall apart. Like, yeah. that, that whole scene <laughs> would just fall apart. Um. <laughs> what do you think of the regular rats? Because they definitely had plenty of those here. I think the, I think the regular rats uh, look and act pretty great in this. Like, in in that, like, opening scene with, like, the guy taunting the rats mm -hmm. and, like, putting the rat into, like, the grinder. Yeah. I was like, you know, what? I I won't even blame the rats if they kill you at this point. You guys suck. And that's exactly what happens. I think one of my favorite things with John in particular, too, was the fact that he would just have this slingshot with him and he <laughs> would sling empty cans at the rats. So he's not trying to hurt them. He's just trying to get them to go away and he's not yeah. taunting them. It's like a game for him. And it's one of those things where... Anyone who has, I guess, had a job where there's downtime like that, you kind of try to figure out what to do, and you probably end up making up these weird little games for yourself or something, and that's what this felt like. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because at no point was John ever cruel in any way. You know, he was the new guy in town, so people kind of lo looked at him suspiciously and made fun of him and... It was kind of like 95% of the people in the town really sucked. And then there were only like 5% who were fun to be around <laughs> and not total jerks to everyone. Yeah. Well, this this seemed like um, their version of like a West Virginia coal town. Yeah. Where it's like this, this town is like literally one bad step away from complete and utter collapse. Like if one if one more bad thing happens to this factory, like this town will just fall into the earth, uh, which is like so much the case with like West Virginia and a lot of uh, Kentucky towns right now, where it's like they are just so close to ruin. <laughs> right. And I, th I think a lot of people that like live in those kind of towns will tell you that like there's just this kind of viciousness to it. Okay. Where it kind of like seeps into the pores of like everything about that town. Mm hmm. You know, there's so much like cruelty to it. They're like to just like survive in it is like a kind of testament to it to in and of itself. Yeah, absolutely. Since it's clear you and I didn't think too highly of this movie and there's probably not too terribly much more to say about it. So, you know, this is going to be a pretty short episode for <laughs> a movie given how long I've discussed other movies. But since we both did not enjoy this, I wanted to ask you, what is your ideal version of this movie? Is it even a movie or is it, like I mentioned earlier, something like a 20 to 30 minute short film? Yeah, I'm not even sure I would have recommended making this in the first place because okay. so much, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if anything, I would have suggested something like um, Nightmares and Dreamscapes, the TNT series a few years back that adapted like okay. a lot of those stories and just doing something like that. Like have a show called night shift. Yeah. Yeah. Some, something like that where you're doing, you're doing graveyard shifts and you're just gonna do like a, as kind of like you said, a 30 minute episode on like 
people going down into uh, the cellar and fighting off rats. The the problem here was that like there's not enough story for an hour and a half. Right. And it didn't justify its existence at any point. I'm in total agreement with you there. I think in addition to the fact that it could have made a better episode of a TV show or something like that, it's something that also could have fit in those anthology movies that I mentioned earlier, something like yeah. a creep show or Tales from the Dark Side, which I know Tales from the Dark Side wasn't entirely made up of Stephen King stories, but he did have one in there that was adapted for that. And with this, I think if someone like George Romero had his hands on it, it yeah. would have been something that I think would have been a lot more visually appealing than it was. It's like they knew what to do visually for the way that they were going to use the visuals, especially with the giant rat bat thing, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It w had a rat tail. It had wings. It was very I mean, disgusting. We, and we, we all know that bats are just giant rats with wings. <laughs> Pretty much. We all know that. So I think if someone like George Romero and Tom Savini had been able to work on this together, that would have been so much more fun to see that because in those anthology series, a lot of the stories are about 20 to 30 minutes, give or take. So that would have fit this sort of time frame that we both think would have been better for this kind of story. And to take 15 pages and turn it into what probably... 90 for a feature length that's an hour yeah. and a half 90 to 100 you know you figure about a page a minute there or something that's a big stretch that's probably why we got so many diner scenes and just all of this extra stuff that we didn't particularly need yeah i mean we watched like four separate people die by these rats before they even go into the cellar yeah <laughs> And it's just like, okay, everyone's fine with this? Like, this dude just disappeared? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess Warwick's really good at his job of covering things up, which I don't believe for a moment, but okay. It was hard to tell, too, if Warwick was, like, the owner of the mill, because he acted in a way that would make you think he was running the entire show. Yeah. It's like, are you a manager? Do you own this outright? I don't... I don't really understand what's going on, and the movie kind of had waves over it. Like, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, if they were going to do a feature-length film for this again, which, given how many remakes and adaptations are constantly in the works for Stephen King stuff, it wouldn't surprise me if someone revisited this at some point. I hope they don't, personally, anytime soon, unless they want to do one of our options and make it short. <laughs> but... I would think diving into that aspect of things, the cover-up aspect, would have made this more interesting, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Instead of just being like, oh, we're moving on, we're hiring someone new. And I will say I did like the ending where you see the shot of the sign and it says, now hiring under new management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess that does imply that he was the manager. Yeah, they just didn't make him feel like a manager like it never felt like he had a boss no well it doesn't help that bachman is like this kind of ethereal figure throughout the entire movie mm -hmm. like we don't ever see him we know he exists he's like this you know man behind the curtain it's a play on the pen name again and it's yeah. like okay maybe you took that a little too far i appreciate the nod but okay we get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it it seems like a problem that would have been really easy to fix, like would have taken maybe a line of dialogue. Oh, easily. Yeah. And it's not like it would have taken that much time away from this movie and all the important things it did. <laughs> <laughs> and despite yeah. my dislike for this movie, I did give it a two out of five. And I think a lot of that had to do with the work, like I said, that the actors did put in. The fact that they did make the rat look disgusting. But otherwise, I was bored. I might bump that down to a one and a half now that I <laughs> think about it more. I hate when I do that. I'm like, okay, I'll give it this because I think it did these things well. But then I discuss it and I'm like, oh, but it really didn't do a lot of things well. 
<laughs> and I don't think anyone else cares if I change my ratings on things. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a personal That's thing fine. that I do for me. <laughs> <laughs> but what rating would you give this? Oh, one? <laughs> one feels good. What you feels sound right? so uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ratings are useless to begin with. But uh, yeah, one feels right. Yeah, I tend to hate rating things. And it's just one of those things where I'm like, I know... I kind of want to do this, but then I always stress out about it. I'm like, but what if I like this movie more than everyone else I know? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> okay, who cares? You know, people can like what they like, but this is not a thing either of us liked. <laughs> I literally only put a rating down if somebody forces me to do that. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. There we go. I have edited mine to one and a half. Doing it live on the air here, but Drew... Thank you for being willing to come on and discuss this movie. I just have one last quick question for you. Had you watched this before or was this your first time? This was my first time. Okay, same here. And clearly not our best decision, but here yeah. we are. We have discussed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like I could have saved this slot for something else. <laughs> I'm sure you will not be the only one who feels that way by the time I get through all of these adaptations here. <laughs> and, you know, I certainly have already felt that way with some of them. I'm just like, what did I just watch? That's, you know, an hour and a half to two hours. I will never get back. <laughs> Why did I do this? Yeah. Well, again, thank you, Drew. You're welcome. Before we go, I want to quickly tell you all about our Patreon. For $1 a month, you can support this podcast and welcome to Geekdom, my other podcast where I talk about movies, books, comics, whatever. And there's a $2 tier where you can get a chat cemetery sticker. I am very excited to have those. And you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at chat cemetery. As always, thank you all for listening. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs>